The TT has been a phenomenon for Audi, particularly here in the UK, which happens to be its biggest selling market. With more than 100,000 sold since the first model was launched in 1999, and the TT outselling its sports car competition by almost two to one over the last decade, there's a lot resting on this new model. To see how it fares, we're going to break this review down into three areas, focusing on how much space it's got, what it's like to drive, and how affordable it is to buy and run. The first thing you might think about this new TT is that it looks very similar to the old one. However, it's not just these sharp creases and lines that differentiate it because it is all new, right down to the chassis. And it's also slightly smaller than the old TT, although Audi has made the wheelbase longer. And what this means is that you get more space on the inside, including here in the boot. You can fit a surprising amount of stuff in here because it's slightly bigger than the old model, including this incredibly heavy bag and a couple of lighter bags, meaning that the TT is really good for a weekend away, even more so because you can fold these rear seats to create a completely flat loading bay. Bigger on the inside it might be, but the rear seats are still a token gesture that even your kids might object to using, let alone other adults. Forget whoever is in the back though, because the TT is all about those up front, and in particular, the driver. For example, you might notice this empty space here and think, where's the screen? Well, in the TT, it's been moved to here. This is so cool. Called the virtual cockpit, this 12.3 inch TFT screen is used to show not only the speedo and rev counter, but also the audio controls and sat nav. It's a really neat solution, as it has to be said, are these heater controls, which as an optional extra are relocated from a panel down here onto the vents themselves. So for the aircon, you press the vent to turn the heating up, you twist the vent, heated seats you press over here. It's wonderfully intuitive, feels so well made, and actually like the rest of the TT's interior, it's just so tactile, it's a joy to behold. Trendy to look at and beautifully built, the TT is only let down by its tiny rear seats. It scores 8 out of 10 for space. The first thing to tell you about this sports car I'm driving is that it is in fact a diesel. Now of course you could have the last generation TT as a diesel as well, but this one really moves the game on, particularly in terms of refinement. It'll also get from 0 to 60 in 7 seconds, return more than 50 miles to the gallon and emit CO2 emissions of just 110 grams a kilometre, meaning it's cheap to tax. For a diesel, it also sounds pretty good when you rev it. For out and out performance, however, you'll need one of the two litre petrol models, which cut that 0 to 60 time to 6 seconds, or in the case of the TTS version, with the flappy pedal gearbox, just 4.6 seconds. What's great about the TT is how easy it makes it to use all of this performance. The gear shift is really precise, the steering's well weighted, particularly if you have it in sport mode, and even the front wheel drive model has lots of grip. Go for the Quattro all wheel drive version, however, and you will stick like a limpet. None of this compromises the TT's everyday usability because visibility is still excellent, the seats are very comfortable, and if you take it out of sport mode and put it into comfort or auto, the steering is light enough to make parking a piece of cake. Mmm, cake. For driving, the TT scores an almost perfect 9 out of 10. So, how much does it cost for all of this performance and desirability? Well, quite a lot actually. Even this diesel model, which is the cheapest in the range at the moment, is a few hundred pounds short of £30,000. 
However, you need to weigh that up against the running cost. We've already spoken about the fuel economy and CO2 emissions being very good, and that's the same for insurance and servicing, particularly for a sports car. Then there are residual values or how much the car is going to be worth when the time comes to sell it. And for the TT, these are predicted to be right up there with the best in class. The only caveat is to stick with a TT lower down in the range. Start to go much higher and you're going to be seriously tempted by what Porsche has to offer. All in all though, for affordability, the TT still scores 9 out of 10. There's little doubt that this new TT will continue to sell extremely well. It looks great, it's lovely to drive, and for a sports car, it's even quite practical. What's more, it doesn't matter whether you go for one of the faster petrol engines or this more economical diesel, because both are really good fun, and that is great news if you're a company car driver with half an eye on how much tax you're going to pay. All in all, this new TT is a really great car, right up there in fact, with the best on sale. It scores a whopping 9 out of 10 overall. For more reviews from the Telegraph Cars team, click up here to subscribe to our YouTube channel or down here to go to our website.